Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Hills of Tuscany. But before that, this video is brought to you by Bipolar Prophet and Delilah Paxiron. Thank you for being Farm Barons. The Hills of Tuscany map can be found over the Farming Simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a little bit of the description. Welcome in Tuscany. Every hill has a village. Every village has a story. Every story has a secret to tell and experience. This map is set in the Italian territory, especially in the Tuscany region. This map is partially real and was developed in an essential way to make the game enjoyable and smooth. This map includes 102 fields, mostly hilly, of different form and dimension. Fields are created with the possibility of being combined. Vineyards of red and white grapes. Intense production of olive groves and trees for which you can use the umbrella shaking machine. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Greenhouses with plantations and nurseries. Complete farming company with four fenced areas for animals, silos, garages in the Italian style. Production chains of the base game are scattered all over the map. All products of the game can be sold in different shops. Five areas can be bought and installed. New productions are build new customized farms. The map is already ready for precision farming and uses a custom soil map. There is a wide forest region. It is suggested that you purchase tractors that will work within the appropriate power ranges for the implements due to the hilly region. Also, if you wish to use helpers, the map author suggests doing a couple headland passes around the fields before you hire your helpers. And medium-sized vehicles with tools up to 8 meters are recommended. This mod map does include a few required mods. They are going to be the fuel tank, the Italian shed package, animal barn pack, olives and olive picker, and the greenhouse and nursery pack. So we are going to use the mods that we typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and those required mods. Again, the animal barn pack. We have the fuel tank, greenhouse, and nursery. We have the Italian shed pack, olives, and olive picker. And here we all go. Now we'll say if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main farm built out exactly how you see it here in New farm mode, with the exception you do not own any land, nor do you have any starting machinery or implements in those alternate play modes. But the main farm is built out exactly how you see it here in new farmer mode. And we're going to load in right outside of our starting farm. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. We'll zoom on out. You'll see this is a full size map. The map does include all of the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22, in addition to having white grapes as an additional crop. Go ahead and take a look at the lands area. You would start off by owning farmland ID 65. That is the main starting farm. It has an area of 3.63 hectares in size and is nearly $200,000 to buy. We also own field 89 or farmland ID. We also own farmland ID 89. That is 2.26 hectares in size, $124,000 to buy. Now, overall, you can purchase nearly everything on this map. There are a few small areas that you cannot buy, but for the most part, the areas here around the map can be purchased. Everything you see is going to be buyable. There is a biogas plant, which is located right here, right by farmland 83. Now that is not buyable land. You will have to buy the production. And I will note that if you do buy the BGA, you cannot sell it. 
Go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. Farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the viable farmlands that are available on the map, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, which field or fields are included, then ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost. It will be important to pay attention to the field numbers here and the farmland ID numbers because they are not lining up whatsoever. In a little bit, we are going to take a look at the field calculator screen, and that is going to show us the actual sizes of the individual fields. You can come back to this screen and the video, and then cross-reference it with the farmland ID for which that field is being held with, and then see how much it's going to cost you to basically purchase that field. As you can see, we own field 1 and 15.3 hectares and 1.97 hectares, respectively. Go ahead and scroll through this list at any point in time. You can pause the video or slow it down if you want to take a closer look at any one particular field size. Take a look at our crop counter. We do have a custom crop counter available to us here on this particular map. We have the ability to dual harvest oats and corn, for example. We can harvest our oats in June. We we'll still put our corn and soybeans down in June. So we do have the ability to do a double crop if we do oats and corn or oats and soybeans, as well as wheat, barley, and canola. We do have then our crop calendar here for white grapes. It lines up with regular grapes. That's what I wanted to see. With respect to the price of screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, wool, and milk, as well as our silage, hay, straw, and grass. As we take a look at the various base game production elements, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production elements as well. In addition to the base game items, we do have some custom items. We have, of course, our white grapes. We have then a second olive oil. Now, I have to say, I cannot see a difference between this olive oil entry and the base game olive oil entry. But you do notice there are different sell points here. The base game olive oil is going to be taken at the restaurant, farmer's market, and store at KM0 for those prices right there. 7100 7150 and 7124 Whereas this olive oil is going to be available at farmer's market and store at KM0 for a different amount. 7286 and 7281 respectively. If the icon is different, I visually cannot tell the difference between these two. In the productions, we appear to have two different recipes that make olive oil. And they are called something different. So what I do not know is I do not know at this point if we have two distinct olive oil products, how well they will be differentiated each other. And that may cause a potential player confusion later on. We also have white grape juice. We have Mark, which is in some maps, some maps have been also referred to as grape pomance, basically the leftovers from the grape crushing process or the juicing process. We have olive pomance, and then we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion production items. So if you are going to want to use the platinum production items, you will need to put down your own sell point for those. Then in addition to the various products which we've already seen, we can grow red cabbage, we can grow flowers, bamboo, aloe vera, cypress, and eucalyptus also on this map, as well as some bonsai trees. With respect to our starting equipment, we start out with a decent listing of starting equipment. Now while it is owned by us, you will see that it does need a bit of maintenance. So you're not going to get top dollar if you're the type of player that wants to sell all of your starting machinery you may want to invest in doing a little bit of repairs first before you go and sell that machinery in order to get absolute top dollar 
map does have some animals built in. We have a pig barn, cow barn, sheep, and chicken coop, although we do not have any animals at the start. This map does have contracts available to us, and we do not own any production chains at the start. This map also has 30 collectibles. Collectibles I have seen scattered around the map appear to be oversized Elm Creek collectibles, but we only have 30 of those. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. Start out with the Fent Fabert 515C small tractor, the Massey Ferguson 3670 medium, and Walter Valmet 8750 medium tractors. We got a Dusfar Top Liner 4090H Harvester that is paired up with the Top Liner 4090H Harvester grain header. And then we have our 4090H header trailer. We have the ETV 6612, sorry. ETV 216i long reach forklift that got introduced in a year one update. We have the 1986 pickup truck. We have the Rudolph TDK 301 RP trailer. We have then our Speedmax 560 mulcher. We've got the Agramaz 5XL plow. We've got the Horse Joker 4CT disc harrow. We have the Amazon KG 3001 Super Power Hero that is then paired up with the 3000 Super Cedar from Amazon. We have the Breedall K105 Lime and Fertilizer Spreader. We have the VB3190 Round Baler. We have the Anderson RBM2000 Round Bale Bale Loading Trailer. We then have the Q7M Front Loader Arms. And then while we don't have any front loader tools to go with those front loader arms, we do have a 1500 kilogram front weight and a pair of 1000 kilogram front weights with respect to mods and dlcs being built into the map we do have a few items built into the map and those are mostly related to the white grape production so we have a broad 9070 l that has been configured to work with white grapes looks like we might have to buy one for white and one for traditional grapes we then have the 6,000 and 12,000 grape trailers that have been modified to work specifically with either or grape. And then we have the white grape trimmer that we're going to have to buy if we want to do white grapes. In addition to that, one of the required mods has the olive picker. This is the umbrella picker that was mentioned in the description. What you're going to do is you're going to, if you have never seen this before, this attaches to your tractor and then you're going to unfold this and go up to a tree and then you are going to shake the trunk of the tree and it's going to cause olives to fall down and be collected within the spread out umbrella and that is included with a barrel of hydraulic oil now let's take a pause here and take a look at the custom production that is available on the hills of tuscany map so let's take a look at the custom soil map before we do that. Now looking at the soil map here, it looks an awful lot like the base game soil map, but it may be a little bit different. We do have a decent swath of silty clay down there to the southwest corner. And then up in the northeast corner, we have predominantly sandy loam. To the west, we have a lot of loam as well as over to the east. Then in the middle, we've got another a swath of loam, sandy loam, and silty clay. Now, with respect to production, this map has 16 production items pre-placed on the map. We have two shrubbery greenhouses. They are able to make bamboo and aloe vera. You're going to need water, solid fertilizer, and seed for our bamboo. And then you're also going to need water, fertilizer, and seed for your aloe vera. With respect to our large greenhouses, or should I say very large greenhouses, we're going to need water, seed, and solid fertilizer as well. Produce our tomatoes, lettuce, strawberries, red cabbage, and flowers. Then have a pair of plant production that is able to produce bonsai, cypress, and eucalyptus. They are going to require water and solid fertilizer to produce those plants. We have a dairy that does not produce chocolate. We also have a bakery. Fairly standard recipes there. We have our grape juice manufacturing that has the ability to not only produce raisins from regular grapes, 
also has the ability to produce white grape juice from white grapes. Uh, do notice we do have the mark output or what I have seen referred to on other maps as grape comments as far as a production output. And we will see that we will be able to use that later on when we get to the BGA. Now our oil mill has sunflower and canola oil only. So our olive oil production has been split off into its own unique production. We have our standard sugar mill. We have a standard grain mill. And then we have our biogas plants. And again, as I mentioned, we have silage input, slurry input, manure input. We also have the ability to take olive pomance and make energy, methane, and digestate, as well as mark. That is basically the equivalent of grape pomance, as I said. That is going to produce energy, methane, and digestate. And then we have our sugar beet cut. We have lime production. It's going to require water and stone. We have then a carpentry shop and sawmill that is going to combine to produce planks and furniture and wood chips. And then we have our oil mill. And this is what I was mentioning earlier. You see, we have two different recipes one for olive oil and one for palmance oil. But you'll notice, so for olive oil, it's two olive units. We have olive oil, and then we make two units of olive pomance. Now, for our pomance oil, we're going to start out with one unit of olives, and we're going to make one unit of what looks like olive oil and one unit of pomance. So it is a different recipe. We have two different entries here for olive oil, and I can't tell the difference if this icon is different from this icon. If we really indeed are going to have two distinct olive oil productions and if players are going to be able to know and understand the difference between those two because we do have different prices and to some degree olive oil is going to be able to sold three places whereas the custom olive oil is only going to be able to sold two places that may lead into a little bit of player confusion let's take a look at our farm so we've already come into our farm we've got our farmhouse here which is kind of a reskin of the alt by the rune farmhouse so you can see we have our garage we have our wardrobe trigger we have our sleep trigger on the side we have a water trigger now, I will say that overall, we can delete or we can sell all of the buildings here at the starting farm with the apparent exception. Can't see it here, but we cannot, for whatever reason, sell the silo. But there is a caveat. That is, if we sell the buildings, various deco elements, like this fire rack, like this sink or water drain and like the decorated items here at the maintenance trigger they are not able to be sold so while we can sell the buildings we can't sell everything else around on the main farm so we are going to give the map just three quarters of a point with respect to the farms being customizable we start out with some pallets of herbicide seed lime and solid fertilizer we also start out with a few bales of straw in addition we cannot get rid of the walls here at the starting farm or the light poles so we can get rid of a lot of the buildings but we can't get rid of a lot of the deco elements so here we have a this is going to be a cow building Let's see, cows or sheep. How about a sheep? 65 sheep in this facility. We have our wool spawn point here. Uh, another maintenance trigger over here. So we have two maintenance triggers on the farm. We have our food trough and we have our water trough. We have our chicken coop. 360 chickens. 
We have our egg spawn point. We have our food trough. We have a fuel tank. The fuel tank is currently empty. Here we have the silo that is permanently a part of the map. For whatever reason, we cannot get rid of this silo. We have our output pipe. We have our input pipe. Let's see, open the lid there. We have a manure heap. And that means we have a pig area right next door. 270 pigs. We have our slurry point. Straw trigger. Food trigger. And our water trigger located right there. And we'll continue on. Down the hill we have our silage bunker. We have our cow area. We have our food trough, our water trough. Our straw trigger. Our dairy trigger. Our slurry point. And then this one's going to hold 80 cows. And then we have another manure heap located down here. As you can see, we have a lot of storage available here on the starting farm. A lot of places for our vehicles, our implements, and various things. Let's go ahead and take a look at our build mode. See what we have as far as custom buildings. We do have some modified buildings here in the Italian shed pack that we have listed as a required mod. Standard silos, silos extensions. We have our fuel tank. Then we have our standard farmhouses. As far as production goes, we do not have the ability to place down the custom production that relates to white grapes or olives. You have a custom cell point for the plants and flowers mod. Then we have our very large greenhouse. We have our shrub greenhouse. Then we have our plants greenhouse area. That is again part of the required mods. Here we have the ability to paint out white grapes. Well as red grapes, although we don't have production for red grapes. And I'm not sure, we'll have to look after this see if we have the ability to harvest red grapes or not i know that we've got a white grape harvester it is the standard harvester set up to do regular grapes and red grapes i do not know then here we have the tree that we can put down that is going to be related to the ability to use the tree shaker to get your olives as opposed to using a tree harvester for the smaller olive trees We have the animal barn pack as far as our custom animals go. Is again a required mod. We have our ability to draw out our brick wall as well as our fence that we had here at the starting farm. And then as far as ground textures go, let's take a look. We have cobblestone. Concrete bricks, concrete tiles, then we have dark dirt, road farm, forest ground leaves, 
grass cliff, grass dirt, gravel, gravel dirt, gravel dust, the various forms of gravel, gravel grass, gravel moss, mountain rock, dark mountain rock, pathway, then we have pathway gravel, road field, road forest, animal mud, asphalt, grass, and granite. Lots of paintable textures, fairly standard plants, and fairly standard trees. I could probably have picked a better place to uh, try to put these textures down than, than here where we have all these other textures going on. Okay, here we have our cobblestone. Concrete tile, dark tile. We had dirt, we had a gravel dirt, right? And then we had our various forms of gravel. And our rocks. Well, there you go. Go ahead and take to the skies. Do a quick little look around as far as an aerial tour. Getting a little bit of altitude here. And while we're doing that, again, the map has 16 production items built in. We've got a pair of shrubbery greenhouses that make bamboo and aloe vera. A pair of very large greenhouses that do our regular items like tomatoes, lettuce, etc. As well as red cabbage and flowers. We have a pair of plant areas. They're going to make bonsai trees, cypress trees, or eucalyptus trees. We have a dairy, bakery, grape juice mill that is going to make both white and regular grapes. We also have oil mill, but the oil mill does not do olive oil. That has been separated out into its own mill. We have a sugar mill, a grain mill for flour. BGA that is going to take olive pomance and mark, which is basically grape pomance, as well as lime production sawmill and the olive oil mill which i already mentioned we are going to give the map a full point there with respect as far as being able to sell all the base game items props animal outputs and such we are also going to give the map a full point there as well and then we are going to as i said take a quarter of a point off with respect to the ability to customize the farm because for whatever reason we can't sell the decorative items that are scattered around the map are scattered around the farm but we can sell the majority of the buildings aside from the silo so here we have our customized dairy been reworked a little bit from the base game dairy and we'll do a little bit more of a thorough tour in the drive around portion of the video Coming over here to the eastern side of the map. This is our sugar mill. Then running down the eastern side of the map. We have our starting farm right over there. The map is rather hilly indeed. We have a fuel point. We have a bakery down there as well as just a general cell point. Loop on over here to the next set of buildings that we need to take a look at.
So here we have our flour mill. We have a sell point in the farmer's market. Then we have our vehicle shop, which we are going to be coming back to later. On the other side of this lake. We have our lime plant. And this is where we're going to be able to make lime. And this lime plant has an awful lot of rock that is also available right here. So if you own the land, you will be able to come over here with your loader and scoop up the rock and take it immediately into the lime production. We have our oil mill, but not for olive oil. And then we have our sawmill and carpentry shop combined. We'll head over to the biogas plant. And as I said earlier, even if you own the biogas plant, you cannot sell the buildings. If you try to sell the biogas plant, the triggers go away, but visually the buildings are going to remain. And around the back, we have several three-sided bunkers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a rather large shed to store your BGA machinery. You are operating the BGA. The restaurant cell point below. I believe here we have then our oil mill for olive oil. Oh, we missed it. Yep, there we have our olive oil mill. Then our greenhouses are all down here. These are some pre-placed olive trees that you will need to use the olive shaker for. We have our pair of plant production. We have a pair of um, these are shrub greenhouses. Then we have a pair of large, very large greenhouses right there. So that is going to conclude our fly around portion of the video. Let's run back over here to our vehicle shop. Where we're going to grab our Mahindra and do a drive around and try to hit all of the various points of interest. So down here at the New Holland dealership, we have our dealer trigger. Let's go ahead and get our Mahindra. We've got a decent sized area here for our machinery to spawn in at. And then our maintenance trigger is going to be located here at the second bay window. Our second bay door. We have our maintenance markers and our maintenance dealer trigger. Go ahead and make our way on out. And we might as well first stop. Right here at the grain mill. There's a fairly standard FS-22 basic grain mill. We have our nut point, our interactive trigger, and our pallet spawn point is located right there. Then just up the street from the grain mill, we have the farmer's market cell point. Now this will get us a good, good overall perspective of the um, 
the hilly nature of this map. A little in uh, in cab driving on the Mahindra. Oh, how I long to have my wheel. We're doing this with my temporary road setup. My traveling setup. First thing we're going to come to is a restaurant style cell point. We have our bakery. This is a standard FS17 bakery. So we have our pallet spawn point, we have our dump icon. And we should have our interactive icon around the front of the facility. Indeed, we do. Then we have our fuel depot located right here. Then we have a bale cell point as well over here. Let's just go ahead and check the PDA and see how these are all named. So we have the straw, bale straw and hay of the two houses. We have our gas station. We have our store at KM0 and our bakery. Now we're going to make our way up here to our sugar mill. Very narrow roads. I would, as the map author suggested, be very, very cautious. Oh, we got some nice rock here too for our line facility. Man, this is a steep hill. Be very cautious of buying oversized machinery for the map. So we have our dump point. Should have our pallet and interactive icon around the other side. Indeed, we do. make our way around the starting farm. So we have our starting farm over here. To the left. We have our dairy, we have our interactive icon. We have our dump point, and then we have our pallet. Spawn point is where? I honestly was expecting it around back. It was maybe marked here.
it's not marked. So that ultimately is going to also come into play with respect to our scoring system here. Speaking of scoring buildings, where appropriate, are using the new texturing technique. Uh, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point there. And that is because while the buildings are using the new windowing technique to provide you a 3D window into the building, some of these custom buildings appear as best as I can deduce to be using some flat textures on the exteriors of the buildings as opposed to using the new technique for those. So here we can buy wheat, barley, oat, canola, sorghum, sunflower, soybeans, corn, potatoes, sugar beet for cereals storage. Then we have cereals retail or our cereals sell point, aka a grain sell point. Actually, I want to run back here because I believe I misspoke on this. So we have a dump point for our cereal storage. And then we have our output point. So I believe this is basically a large silo that we can use as opposed to being a bulk buy point. Got a bit of a small forest for those who uh, just have a hankering, have a hankering to cut down some trees. Then inside of here we have our two shrub greenhouses, our two very large greenhouses, as well as our two plant areas. We've already talked about what those requirements are when we're taking a look at the productions of the map. It is a very hilly map, for sure. Now let's check out our custom oil mill. This will be for the two variants of olive oil. Something else we need to check on is the whole red grape harvesting. Although we didn't have red grapes here. Right? We have regular grapes, we have white grapes, but we don't have red grapes listed. Check our grape production. We have white grapes and regular grapes. Now where was I that we saw red grapes? Forget now. Wasn't here. Wasn't here. Any rate, here we have our custom olive production. I'm sorry, I've completely misspoken there. This is not our custom olive production. This is our custom grape production for grapes and white grapes. Sorry about that. Getting these things mixed up.
Try to get down this windy, hilly road. That does make some sense to have a custom grape facility right by the grapevines. Let me just cut that guy off. Oh man, oh man, this is a downward folly. We have a restaurant cell point down here uh, by the lake. Yeah, just a few more points of interest. Be curious. We've had we had a Spanish map or a Spain map released just the other day. Looks completely different to this map. Although that map also has a fair bit of grapes and olives replaced. Then we have Hills of Tuscany today. Curious as to which map you prefer, and maybe are you going to jump in either one of these maps? with respect to giving olives a bit more of a chance or grapes a bit more of a chance. So we have our flurry dump point, our interactive trigger. We have our fermenting or silage dump off point. Then we have six three-sided bunkers on the back here. And as I said, if you own the BGA, like we do, right? We own the BGA at this point. Right? So we own the BGA. If I come up here and I select this, I just get renamed. If I hit demolish and I select it again, do you want to sell it? Yes, for $500,000. Oh, but it stays. And now when we click on it, nothing happens. We cannot get rid of the BGA. Just wanted to demonstrate that to you. I try to remember to try to sell the biogas plant on maps that have BGAs. Because we do now have pumps and hoses. Nice forest up here to the, to the left. And here we have our animal dealer. Now, if you remember, I was mentioning that I felt like the collectibles on this map were oversized collectibles from Elm Creek. There you go. Here we got a big wooden harvester. A little bit of an upscale. From your normal wooden toys. Then we have a bale cell point down here at the animal dealer.
fairway over here to our oil mill. This is going to be for canola and sunflower oils. I am right. We have our dump point, our pallet spawn point. interactive trigger. Yep, this is going to be for canola and sunflowers. We have our combined sawmill and carpentry facility. We have our wood chip point around the back. We have our wood cell trigger. We have our wood drop off trigger. We have our interactive icon. We have our spawn point for our planks. We then have a dump point for our planks. Oh yeah, two more areas to go. We've got our lime plant down here just south of the lake. Remember we saw that on the drive around. And then there is something there south of Field 97. I suspect since we have not gotten to the olive oil facility during the drive around portion, but that is where the olive oil facility has been located. We'll just teleport over to that once we get done here at the lime plant. Oh, look at that. There you go, you get you get a bonus collectible for this video. We have our interactive icon for the line production. We have our dump point for line production. We have our dump point for our water. Again, we have a whole pile of stone over here that we can collect. have our fill pipe for our lime production. Let's jump up over here. We're going to go south of 97. That is indeed the olive oil mill. You can see why I got this and the grapes mixed up because this is just a reskin of that same facility. We have our interactive icon. We have our oil spawn point. And then around back, we have our dump point. So overall, we are going to do the map three quarters of a point with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked because we did have that instance at the dairy where we really just don't have a good marker as to where the productions are going to come in at. Let me know your all's thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. This is a map you're going to be looking to play in the near future. And until next time, happy farming.